Hello, welcome to our continuing a devotional through the book of Philippians. Currently, we're in Philippians chapter 2. We're going to be picking it up at verse 17, where it says this. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. Now, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. But you, For they all seek their own interests and not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father he has served me in the gospel. And I hope therefore to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me. And I trust that in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. So Paul is now just you know, kind of shifted away from his... Uh, uh, spiritual moral imperatives or from doctrinal teaching just to express some personal uh, affection, concerns, and plans. And he starts in verse 17 by saying, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering, uh, as a sacrificial offering of your faith, I'm glad and I rejoice with you all and you should rejoice with me also. He's using Old Testament, image, Old Testament imagery where they would pour out usually wine as a drink offering and it would just go, it would be poured out in honor of Christ or in honor of God the Father. And it would be poured out and it would soak into the ground or wherever it was poured out at that time as a way of saying that I'm poured out for you. And Paul says, yeah, I'm suffering. I'm going through a hardship. My life is being poured out. I'm growing weaker and, and, and it's harder every single day. And I, But that sacrifice, that's for your benefit. That's for your faith. And I'm glad. I don't look at it as like, oh, poor me. Paul never had a pity me uh, party. He never looked at it and said, oh, this is terrible. It's not fair. It's not right. Uh, he just looked at it and said, you know what? If I'm poured out and I'm poured out for the benefit of others, for the cause of Christ, I'm okay with that. And he says, you should be okay with that. Likewise, he says in verse 18, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. Now, he loved his, he left fellow Christians. And he loved the Christians at Philippi. And he says, I want to make sure they're okay. And he couldn't go to them personally because he's in jail. So he says, I hope to send, verse 19, I hope to send Timothy to you soon. Because he says, I want to know you're doing okay. And there's no email. There's no phone. It takes months to find out how people are doing. He says, I hope to send Timothy to you. And that when he comes back, I'm going to hear good news that you're living holy, righteous, steadfast, faithful, loving lives. And then he praises Timothy. He's been praising the, the church at Philippi despite some problems. He also corrects those problems. But he praises Timothy. He says, listen, Timothy's he, he's not like others. He goes, in verse 19, he says, I'm no, verse 20 he says, I have no one like him. He genuinely cares about your welfare. He's not, he's not about himself. Now, when Paul says, I have no one like him, and everyone else seeks their own interest, he's using hyperbole. Obviously, there were other Christians, other ministers, other uh, brothers and sisters in Christ who were selfless, who were faithful. But he's saying it's they're hard, they're rare. It's hard to find somebody like Timothy who's not about himself. You know, he, he's not concerned about his own interests, but he's interested in you. So we could see Timothy as a role model for how we should live. And, and he says he's genuinely concerned about your welfare. But he also says in verse 21, for they seek for all, for they, others, all seek their own interests, but not those of Jesus Christ. And that's important because in verse 20, he says it's for your welfare. In verse 21, it's say, he says it's for the interests of Jesus Christ. And here's what we need to understand. Those two things aligned. What is the interest of Jesus Christ? It's how the church is doing. It's his bride. It's his people. It's his body. And, ha and so when you serve the church and you're benefiting the church and you're helping it to grow and to be strong, you're serving Jesus because that's his interest. Jesus is concerned for his bride. And when you pour yourself out for the benefit of his bride, you are serving his interest. Then in verse 22, he says, but you know Timothy's proven worth. Timothy was not new. They knew how faithful he was. You know he's been like a son to a father with me, uh, to a father in sharing of the gospel. And he's going to be there soon, I hope. And I hope I'll be there soon. Again, Paul's not 100% sure, but he thinks he's going to see them soon also. So in looking at this, we should look at Paul and Timothy as examples. Paul says, I've sacrificed for you. I've poured out like a drink offering for you, but that's okay. That's a good thing. I'm willing to do that. Timothy, 
He's not worried about himself. He's interested in you, which means he's interested in the cause of Christ. That's a good thing. So here we have two models on how you and I should put aside our personal desires, even our personal comforts and happiness, to serve the cause of Christ and to serve the people of Christ. I hope you will do that. Have a blessed day.